What is up, YouTube? Max Opal back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at um, the stubby tank. Actually, had a f actually a few people actually now be like, "Hey, how do you build on it?" Because um, there's not a lot of videos and tutorials on how to build on the stubby tank. Um, and a lot of people are having like a pretty big problem with it dry hitting and all that kind of stuff. Um, like they're not wicking it right or something. Um, they'll get like three, four draws off in it and then it's dry hitting, which I haven't had that problem. The only time I ever had a dry hit is like when I let my tank run a little bit too low and that was really about it. So today we're going to be doing a tutorial of how I wick it. Because then maybe it'll help you. So then you're not getting dry hits. Ain't nobody like no dry hits. So we're actually going to kind of point the camera down and take a look. And we'll be right back with that. Alright, so as you can see, we have uh, the stubby kind of tore part down here. And I used a nickel um, to get it out. You know, a nickel or a dime um, will get it out of the stubby. Basically, just take your, your tank you know right out of the stubby you know which if you have a stubby obviously you know how to actually take it out so we're gonna set that aside for the moment um, so we're gonna go over a few things because I tore it apart so every time that you actually go to re-wick your stubby tear it apart cleaner make sure you even wash like your metal cables because these actually hold a lot of flavor too and a lot of residue of leftover flavor because you know it's in the tank these take and they draw up flavor, you know, straight up into the tank. So, and then you got your top piece, you know, your post it goes all the way through, wash everything that's right here. And little do people know, you know, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that's asked me where the airflow was actually went on these two. Okay, so for the stubby device, you have this one here, which is the wide open airflow. And then you got this one, which is a restricted. And then you got... This one, which is, uh, I would say, in my opinion, it's like two, you know, if you want to put numbers on them. But this one is considered an MTL, even by all their packages, all of that. That's like MTL. This is kind of like DTL and then full wide open right here. So these, though, when, you're, when we're going to put everything back together, what we're going to do is you're going to actually take when you're actually going to clean your thing this post right here actually comes out alright and you want to actually take and pull that out and your post that's sitting right here on the top of your deck that sits in here is actually where the airflow is at so we're actually gonna go ahead and put that back on first which I'm gonna go with the full full wide open one we're gonna get that on there I got fat fingers, so I, <clears throat> I'm using my tweezers to kind of put her together. We're going to grab a screwdriver from over here. If I can get my fat fingers to keep this still. I like the airflow pins I like on these new devices. They're good to a point. But I wish they weren't so tiny. Like whatever happened to the good old school airflow. I mean I can understand making pins to put in there. But like let's make them a little bit bigger honestly. Because this can be kind of a pain in the ass. As you can see. And the good thing with this airflow is, unlike what a lot of people think, you do not have to have this thing, like, like tighten her down, yes. But, like, don't ridiculously tighten it down. Because if you ever got to take it off, you actually have a very, very, very little tiny space to sit here and work with to take it off. And you don't want to have to get, like, pliers out and any of that type of stupid shit. Because you don't want to ruin your stubby. You know, a stubby mod is, they're not cheap. So you don't want to ruin the damn thing. So, like, as you've seen, it got a little bit tight, so I gave it one just nice little push. All right, so now we're going to set that right in the top here. 
and you see just slide right on in there and that's kind of where your uh, your coils will go is right there all right so then we're gonna grab the tank we're gonna slide that on there and it really doesn't matter which way you actually put like the tank thing together as long as you remember you put the airflow facing out when you put it back in the damn stubby so many people actually make that mistake but you slide that top piece on and remember this post right here is actually what connects to the bottom of that too so when you're actually pushing this up in there you're gonna end up pushing that post back up a little bit so you're gonna wanna put your, get your finger up there and get it ready that way you don't see I just about dropped the bottom back out so you kind of want to hold her in place just for a quick minute. There we go. Get your finger up there. Get your tank back together up here. And once you start screwing that in right here on the bottom, that little 510 pin, it should just kind of pop right back into place almost. Which it does take a minute to screw that in, so don't worry. Even if you feel like it, a little weird grab and it feels like it's popping back down in there, I mean, sometimes it does, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. And as you can see, I mean, fairly easy. Screwed right back on, although it's a little sideways on the bottom, so we're going to have to loosen that. Kind of straighten it back out. You want to go over top of this. Make sure everything is flush. You don't want your tank here like what I, I almost left it like that. You don't want it to kind of be turned to the side or any of that. So make sure that's put back together the right way. So I'm going to loosen it back up and kind of put her back where she needs to be. Right about there. You definitely don't want any leakage. You know, especially inside of a stubby. It is much of a pain in the ass as that already is to clean and how much a fingerprint magnet that thing is anyways. So now that you kind of got the top already kind of connected to the post, it's not too hard to actually move the bottom around after to loosen it a little bit to kind of put it right where you want it. So we'll go ahead and tighten her back up now. Yeah, that's about right where I wanted it. And one thing like in my other video I was telling you, um, when you're tightening this, don't like ridiculously tighten it, but definitely tighten it quite a bit to where it is tight, tight, that bottom pin. Because this actually right here is what caused it for when I first got the mod to say atomizer short. So you make sure that that is fully screwed in there this pin here and as you can see I've unscrewed it quite a few times and that, like I don't like the gold plating much and the pins already starting to kinda of wear out a little bit like I, I hope that they kinda of like reinforce that pin a little bit more than than that cuz it's kinda of, eh. alright now next step what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab these little screws that are right here that also set up on the top post cuz you actually do not want to forget these because that's actually what holds uh, the top of the post on the inside right up in there in place too so you got you got to undo this and then also you know them two screws so we got to drop them screws back in which these ones kind of are a pain because you kind of need tweezers a little bit with with these and the thing that sucks is I lost my screwdriver that was uh, the hex screw one so I actually had to get the allen wrench key back out and sit here and do this so and it's such a pain too because this this allen wrench is so tiny but you just screw that back on in so because the the most important steps are actually starting to come up now for like when you're you're wicking and all of that for like your flavor and um, your really most important steps you know and I've seen a lot of different people when they 
get their stubby and they do have uh, like a review on it and like oh this tank here and they're using it and they kind of go over the specs of it but they never really like make a build kind of video and tutorial on it it's like everybody kind of just uh this thing's too much of a pain in the ass or it's too big or it just dry hits or it, you know and they just toss it aside after a couple of days and go get like an aether boro or something like that which i mean it's kind of shitty to do because this could uh, you know eh, this could end up being one of the, you know, best Boro tanks that there is, and it's more convenient because this is the, one of the biggest ones. This is 8.7 milliliters of juice that this thing holds, and I pulled out three pins out of my bag for some reason. We only needed two. Set these uh, so these aside because we don't want to lose them. Okay, now we're going to bust out a mod so we can start building a little bit. Um, which I like throwing it on my, uh, my Vupu, yeah, whatever this, or no, my Vaporesso Gen S mod, because when I actually get done building on it, like the Vaporesso Gen mod has like a little scanner thing inside of it, and it'll be like, oh, this material here, and it'll tell you like, oh, you need wattage or bypass, or you need temp mode, or any of that type of stuff too, so... We're going to go ahead and throw it on there. And actually, I'm going to turn it back on. It might end up scanning it first. Because I'm going to make sure it's turned down in wattage. Because I really don't want it at 100 watts. When we turn it back on. To like, you know, kind of hit the coils. Only reason why I was on 100 watts because I had a TFV-18 tank on there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and turn it off because I'm not trying to build and burn my fingers. That's never fun. That's always a pain in the ass. Uh, so i got two different coils actually I'm going to choose from. So i got a mixed twisted or a flat twisted. Um, I'm actually going to go with a mixed twisted, which is a 0.4 ohm. So, And a lot of people actually, they don't know a lot about ohms of like coils either. Like 0.4 ohms, I would suggest anywhere from like 40 to yeah, to about 80 watts. 0.3, like my other one, 40 to 90. Because um, the lower your number is going to go, like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, the higher your wattage can go. Like I just had a 0.26 on there, and I was like going the whole 80 watts on here, and it wasn't really bugging anything. So we're going to go ahead. Get these screws right here, kind of propped up, get them ready. I always actually, I don't know, it's a habit to always unscrew four of them. But before we even get a coil in there, I'm going to show you some stuff. Uh, a couple of things that I've learned because I've seen some videos of people talking about them and then things that I have tested myself and with a couple other people and then learned is in these tanks... You got the, the stainless steel cables, which everybody knows. All right. And how they're sitting up in here. Everybody always says, take and push them down so they're out of the way. You only want your cotton touching them a little tiny bit to get like a little spritz tickle of the juice, which is wrong. Absolutely wrong, because actually when you juice this tank up, when you go to actually take a hit, that airflow airflow from you taking a hit, sucking it up and pulling it up, comes up these coils and, and spritzes on that. And a lot of people hit hard, okay? So you don't want these super high, but you also don't want these super low. So inside of your tank, you want them... Uh, I don't know if we can actually see that from here, not through the tank without glaring. You want them barely touching in there... So make sure that they're barely touching the bottom. And then make sure up top here that they're above, but not too far up either. Like you don't want them way up there, but you also don't want them way down there either. So you want them just up above this hole like what these ones are here. And like I said, on the inside, you want them barely touching, you know, barely above the bottom inside of here. Like, as you can see, like, it, it's barely above the bottom in, in there. Just literally barely above it. 
So make sure it's barely above above the bottom like that. That way, when it once your juice starts to get low, it might dry hit once your juice inside gets gets low, but it also might not dry hit. See, mine don't dry hit unless I let my juice get to like down in here, anyways. And all tanks get a little bit of a different hit once you know your juice gets a little too low. So make sure you like I said them are down there just a barely above the bottom of the tank and now the camera focuses so like that and then up top make sure that they're barely just poking up too because uh, they are kind of curved so make sure basically like your pointed curve part is actually kind of sitting up and above and then you should be good actually so then when we're going to cotton this which that coil, actually, I know we got to slap our coil in first. Um, I'm going to take this coil, actually, being that it's not one prong already facing the other way. I'm going to have to kind of twist her, make the other prong kind of face the other way, which I hate kind of doing. Sometimes it messes with your coil because it unwraps it, basically, a little bit, but... It's not a big deal to do that, and uh, it'll actually still work. Your coil, you'll your coil will still work fine. So if you got to if you're in a town to where you don't have a lot of the coils that end up looking like this, you can take one that where the prongs are kind of going both way and kind of just twist it one way, which almost takes a whole wrap off, but it doesn't take a wrap off, and it does not hurt the coil. You'll still get the same ohms. You just, sometimes it'll undo a wrap, basically, is all that it does. So now that we're going to set this on here, that way we can get this in here. And make sure when you're actually getting this in there, you're perfectly in the middle with the airflow. And then when you go to screw her down, make sure you raised her up a little bit. But when you're, you put your coil in, Make sure you're right in the middle. And what I usually do is I'll just hold her down slightly. Make sure this right here on the inside of the post is literally right underneath the, the screw. You're not sitting off to the side out here. Not sitting off to the side on the inside. But directly underneath of it and basically full contact from this screw right here. Full contact. Because the more contact you have, when you have full contact, I didn't get that. Could you? And of course, Siri's talking on my watch. Once you have full contact with your screws on your on your post too, actually, is what's also going to mess with your ohms too. So make sure that you have full full contact between your screw and your coil. Okay, now we're going to come through, and that actually looks pretty good there. We're going to put these other two screws down. We're not done yet with the coil. I sit here, and I mess with this quite a bit, and I've done a, and I, I went through probably about six or seven coils because I tested a lot of theories to see how good that this coil was. Okay, so I'm going to grab this little post, this little coil tool that you have here, and what I actually do is I raise my coil up. You know, and a lot of people push their coil down, down in. All right. But see, as you can see, I have mine raised. All right. And I raise it every time. The more airflow that this thing actually has, the better flavor and the better hit this actually has too. So what I do before I even snip my leads is I raise my coil on there just to make sure I don't have to let loose on that and put more, you know, coil in there and as you can see we're not doing too bad it's right in the middle and I think that's about where we're gonna leave it actually is right there we're gonna leave it raised just like that so it's about half the coil above the post right here that's usually about where I leave my coil is about halfway so like half the coil as you can see 
the top half of the coil it is above the posts here. That's where I put end up putting my coil at, and it works perfect. So then the other thing I'm uh, only thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that it's centered and that it's turned the right way. And then I'll grab my ceramic tweezers right here and I'll take and I'll kind of make sure each one of the coils themselves, like each one of these little pieces are, is also raised in the certain, you know, the same way that they're all level. Because, you know, once you're moving like a coil around, I mean, you can kind of bend the shit out of your coils. So, but I, I usually take and give them a little tug too and open the the coil up a little bit. I spread them out a little bit and a lot of people are like, oh, don't do that. It actually doesn't hurt your coil at all. It doesn't mess with the ohms. It doesn't do anything. But I open it up just a little bit for when I go to wick because then when you're wicking, it, you know, it pulls on your coil so then it, you know, it compresses everything back. So now, kind of got it actually right where I want it so now I'm gonna go come through and I'm gonna snip the leads on it now which snipping the leads on it I'm gonna go flush right to the post that one I didn't catch <laughs> we try not to let leads fly which I flung it up there anyways with the other one so but that's how I coil it, just like that. Sits up about that high. Sits right about there. And I spread it out, like I said, I spread my coil out just a little bit. Got my, my posts setting just like that. Okay, now we're going to grab our piece of wick. And this is a 2.5, uh, yeah, 2.5 mil, mil, uh, millimeter uh, size coil. So I'm going to take a piece of wick here. And you got to remember with your wick, once it's juiced, it tends to fluff up quite a bit. But you also got to remember the more that you also use your coil on the inside of here. Um, you do have a chance, kind of like some RDAs and all that too, that your coil or your wick can collapse. All right, so you you want to make sure that everything's placed in the right way. So when you put your your wick in, that it's right in the middle, so you can cut both ends. And it was one fluffy piece of cotton. Usually, it's not that fluffy when I take it out of the bag. So we're going to go ahead now and just slide the cotton kind of right on through. You know what, you just give it a good twist, slide it right on through. And you see now why I, I squished them, you know, I pulled them apart because now I usually stick my finger here while I'm pulling and give it just little tugs. And when this is tugging here, as you can see, it's pulling the coil back together. So squishing them back together. since. See, so now we're about halfway into the cotton almost. Okay. So you don't want a thick piece of cotton, you know, inside of there. But now, as you can see, it kind of compressed the coil kind of back together, you know, a little bit. If the camera would actually focus for once. See, folds it back together. All right. So now what I do, and a lot of people come through, and they're like, oh, you want to cut it straight to the base. Well, I don't cut it straight to the base to a point. I actually come above still, like some of the old school RDAs, but I don't go straight to the base. Like I point like the top of my scissors here, kind of at the base, but I still kind of go down at a diag diagonal a little bit. Like you would still, say with like the Zeus Mesh RTA. That way you got like a kind of like a little diagonal cut still. And this one kind of looks a little deformed. All 
Uh, we had a little juice on the scissors that we put on the top of the cotton I see that's why it kind of looks like that it's all right we're gonna go through the top of them and kind of clean them up anyways once we're done and now you do want to actually fluff these a little bit and since we you do a diagonal I always usually just sit there and kind of fluff it straight down just like this a little bit and then I'll kind of open the cotton up give it a little bottom tickle and then I'll take like my regular flathead screwdriver and kinda slowly kinda open it up a little bit more because you do want to fluff the cotton in here you really do and now we're gonna go to regular fluffing so do your regular fluffing not harsh you know you do want some wick up here And on this tank, you want your coil or your cotton, you want it kind of thick up top, but then you don't want it thick. You want it like thick kind of in the middle right here. So if your cotton ever drops, that it doesn't burn right here while you're hitting, which I know I didn't dry fire on just the coil itself. It's because I kind of trust the, I trust this coil. I trust my placement. So we're going to kind of do the same thing over here. Going to open her up. Come through with the flathead, open her up a little bit. You see, now you don't have to do this with a flathead and open her up a little bit. It's just my cotton, for some reason, is thick as could be. So if you have a thicker cotton, like it's something small like the flathead like this, and kind of open her up after fluffing her out a little bit and then come back through fluff her a little bit more once she's opened up grab all this extra shit right here kind of get it out of your way and then what I can't do is come back afterwards and then I do a straight cut of all this loose shit that's sitting on the sides there any of the loose stuff yeah you don't want a bunch of loose cotton which then in fact doing it like that almost puts your cotton straight to the build because you're getting all that loose shit right there off in it So, now you can come back through. Like, I got this one tool here that actually comes in real handy for fluffing, which is like this little poker kind of thing. And I usually just kind of come through and do this and really thin it out. So any knots that are in there, as you can see, kind of just pulls it right on out like that. Yeah, see, there wasn't many knots on that side, so that was actually perfect. So I just come back through and just actually just grab all this loose shit right here and kind of tug her off and pull her off. And as you can see, it's nice and fluffed out. And it's kind of a little bit past the base on this side, but it's like almost flush on the base on this side. You know, as you can see almost which I'm gonna actually level this side out right here because that one's a little bit too long actually that for my liking so we're gonna go a little bit shorter on that side so almost almost to the base of it you know everybody's making their wicks quite short on here because like they said like they a lot of people like oh I just want my wicks barely touching the cables which to a point is true, but then also to a point false. Like you don't want them just barely touching it. So get it really fluffed out, and you want it like a half of inch away from the base, actually. So you still want a thick piece of cotton, but not too thick of a piece of cotton. So then actually grab your juice, and we're actually going to be throwing some silver back 
uh, rocky inside of here. This is actually really good juice too. This is strawberry banana vanilla bean, vanilla bean ice cream oatmeal cookie flavoring. So juice up the middle right there a little bit. Don't overdo it right off the bat. Kind of just get her a little bit wet, let her soak in. Put a couple dabs on the side too while you're doing that. Because we're going to do this the old school kind of like soaking and wetting way. Because this makes it so much easier to place your cotton where it actually needs to be. And once your cotton's actually wet enough up top here, kind of like this now. Now once it's wet enough, kind of take your cotton and you want to kind of pinch her together. No, not really pinch her together, but you want to take still like you're, you're grabbing your cotton like you're doing that flip and tuck, you know, on other RDAs. So we're going to kind of do a flip and tuck, but we, you know, there's nothing, nowhere to put your, your cotton here, but you're going to take it and you're going to kind of pick it up and set your cotton directly on top of them coils, them stainless steel cables. Okay. And then once your, your whole piece of cotton, as you can see, we're going to grab and set it right there, right on top. So you want the ends of your cotton, like I was just showing you, you want to kind of pick it up and flip but you want your end of the cotton, the end, like legitly the tip of your cotton here, the ends of it, sitting right on top. It's where your cotton kind of stands up, up here. And then you just kind of come on in, make sure that all the cotton is sitting, you know, kind of right there in that formation like that, right, right on that. So kind of do the flip and tuck from back in the, you know, like how we usually do with RDAs or RTAs. You want to do like your flip and tuck motion, but you're just flipping and tucking, but you're not really tucking it into anything. You're just kind of picking it up and flipping the end, like legitly your end of your, your cotton right on, on top of the, the, steel ta sta uh, the stainless steel cables. So you're just taking, uh, taken, as you can see. You're just going to kind of flip right on top. So you want you want them to be sitting right on, on them cables. So while, while them are sitting on the cables like that is actually what's going to draw up all the, all the juice and all the flavor. Okay. And there's a reason why I do it like this too. Because, like I said, you have a chance of... Your cot, or your uh, your cotton in the middle of these coils, kind of dropping. It's still an RDTA, so it's technically like an RDA style kind of thing, but it's still a TA in there too, you know. But it's it's still a tank to a point, but it's still you want to do it as an RDA kind of style build almost to a point. But just make your cotton kind of look nice and pretty like that. Like I was saying, you just want to kind of flip it up, set your ends in there, and kind of make it just look nice sitting inside of your wells. Because that's all it's going to do is just sit right there inside of there. And in the in-betweens, as you can see, there's kind of a, like I kind of have an arch going in between, you know, right here. You know, on the, on the sides, there's, there's almost an arch right in there. Not too much of a gap, because when you put that top cap on, this top cap right here, there's actually two kind of indents that are right here on the inside. They're going to kind of actually push both of these sides down right where they need to be anyway. So basically what you're doing is just making sure this is all nice and looking good where it needs to be, and that the tips of your cotton here are on top of the steel cables there. So once that cap goes on, it kind of pushes the t these tops right here, right where they need to be. And then your cotton, just like this, and your coil placement like this, should be perfect because you still got a perfect amount of airflow coming from that pin right there on the inside. 
and you have a perfect amount of contact between your cotton and the stainless steel cable there and then also still a perfect amount of airflow that's coming in between the marches between the cotton too that's coming up because the airflow of the stubby goes from the bottom all the way up to the top so you want all that airflow to be hitting it because you don't want your coil to get too hot <clears throat> excuse me the hotter your coil gets with all that airflow your coil is just going to get hot and actually do um a dry hit so the more airflow that you've got all the way around you know like i said between here the cotton be underneath of that right here that's why i raised the coil up some even right here that airflow is going to hit this right here even at like say 60 watts and it's not going to make it super duper hot and get a hot spot because you have all that airflow so you don't want to actually push this coil all the way down to what like you know like a lot of people actually do that's just dumb to do. You don't want to do that. You want to have as much airflow as you actually possibly can so this thing doesn't get as hot as what it does. Because the stubby, for some reason, fires fast on a coil. Very fast. So now we're, all we're going to do is literally just set that right there on it. And now we're going to turn around on the, uh, the Vaporesso. and see it scans it sitting at a 0 0.44 actually that one is so as you can see no hot spots and I didn't even do the dry hit test or any of that and it could be that's just because it's all the placement of this coil if you place your your coil high like this and then you place your cotton just enough cotton basically in that middle and arch you know every time I, I put my cotton in here I kind of arch it like this just slightly to where there's a nice fat piece of cotton sitting up top but then it also has just the tips sitting down in here with just a little bit of extra cotton not much I never get a dry it and it, you know as you can see like I said I didn't even dry test it no dry spots all sorts of just vapors and juices coming off too so it's hitting perfect now we're gonna go ahead and fill her and as you can see the the coil is sitting like right there too so we actually I might actually lower that coil just a little bit because that's sitting this one's a different coil than what I have with the other one this one actually is a little bit of a thicker coil so I'm going to lower that just by like a millimeter. But still keep your coil raised though. You still want that airflow. See my coil is like right there. Which does not, still doesn't give me any spit back. It doesn't give me any of that other shit. So we're going to go ahead and fill her. This thing can be a pain to fill too since it's an 8.7 milliliter tank. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to vape on her a little bit too before we kind of bounce out. That way you guys know that, you know, not really fucking around with you that, that this actually works. And every time I use one of these side fills, I get juice every fucking where. <laughs> Which I just did. I just poured a shit ton of juice right on the side of it. I might have to go get me a napkin or something. Actually, looks like I got a little hand towel over here. That's good. This juice smells so good too. It smells like some banana bread with like a, like the oatmeal cookie kind of makes it smell like banana bread with like coffee in it almost. And like the vanilla cream just makes it, the vanilla ice cream actually is what it is. Vanilla ice cream makes it so smooth when you hit it too. So it, it, in your local store, if you guys have any, 
uh, silver bat juices. Yeah, definitely try them out. They, they are very good juices. All right, got her nice and cleaned up. And then we'll meet you back up top. And we're back up top. All right, now what we're going to do, uh, we got the tank here, got her filled up. And as you can see, a nice little trick that I learned too is once you fill it up, if you look at it, all them little air bubbles up there is because it's wicking. Like all that juice is just pulling right on up there. Just, it, it's insane, actually. The way that I do that, but if I do that instead of like the Zeus X Mesh RTA, um, it kind of sucks actually wicking it like that. Yeah, like I always like the diagonal cuts uh, on the cotton for some reason because then you got like that little tail that kind of sits down there that's nice and thin. So you hit, like you can thin your cotton at that point. <laughs> oh, excuse me, but you don't have to like ridiculously thin your cotton at that point because you got that little tail so you can just kind of go through the top of your wick and just be like oh nice little thinning and you're good to go but like as you've seen, seen though take and do like still the old school flip and tuck but you're not tucking it in you're kind of like flipping and dropping your tail of your cotton right on top of them them stainless steel leads okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and throw her inside the stubby. Uh, let's uh, let's throw it in there the right way though. <laughs> Almost put it in there backwards. Throw that in there. Tighten your flush nut up. You know, a couple people have asked me for a video on on a build on it so far, and actually I searched too. There's not a lot of people that actually build on on this for some reason we're gonna grab a fresh fresh battery you know at all there's not not a lot of people that like they just showed off their stubby and that was really about it there wasn't really much on to do with like oh here's a build on, on the stubby itself you see every like i was saying everybody's always building on like the the aether boro or something like that never like the actual stubby tank for some reason I mean, I don't know why, honestly. I'm not saying that the tank is like 100% perfect. It is a good tank. It could be a little bit better. I did notice with some flavors, it does mute them to a point. Like you'll get like a bland taste of that flavor. Um, But it's not really to worry. That still has to do with like the type of wick that you're using and the way that you're wicking kind of if you get a muted flavor thin your wick out a little bit more that way it doesn't mute it as much uh, let's see so we're going at 0.44 ohms at 55 watts and my camera is ridiculous for some reason not wanting to like actually focus today for some damn reason you stupid thing but fuck the camera <laughs> y'all could see me and hear me that's the main thing uh, I got it in power mode 55 watts 0.44 ohms and like I said I had that banana bread on there so we're gonna go th throw that on there and I put a different drip tip on there too I put a wide bore 510 why is my airflow off? I am not getting any airflow for some reason. None whatsoever. So something got clogged in there. We are actually going to find this out together. Why? I am not getting any airflow. Hopefully it's not that post. You know, that airflow, the airflow pin.
Well, the airflow pin's in there just fine. So, ew, fucking dummy. I totally fucked up. I put the top on backwards. That airflow. Make sure when you put your tank together, that airflow right there is supposed to be in the front right here with your fill port. So I fucked that up. So, but all we gotta do, pain in the ass though. Just stick it in there with the airflow facing forward. Just means when I go to refill it, I'll have to take it out, turn the damn tank, fill it, put it back in, fill it. You know, all that shit. Putting it in there with the, the rubber piece backwards like that isn't going to really hurt it any. So it just... It's going to make it annoying to where, like, the door is not going to sit on the front, but we're not going to worry about that at the second because we want to hit it. So. So as you can see, there's one hit. All right, we're going to sit here and hit it a few times, and I showed you all my wicking and what I do. Okay, so there was one hit. Still juicing. Yeah, I, it's not drying out. Like, not even in the slightest. Although, for some reason, it's showing my battery is kind of weirdly dying, but I don't know. And that was a hot hit, that one, and it's still juicing. So I'll show you, too. After taking, it was about six to seven hits altogether. We'll take that off as quick as we can. That way it doesn't, like, do a standby kind of rejuicing. So, as you can see, still juiced right up. And, and she's still hot. She's smoking. Like, that's a lot. Like, I, it's sticky as could be. It, all sorts of juice just still sitting there so that's how I wick the stubby tank so if you just don't fuck up like I do and put the earful back on there like that so now I gotta get in there somehow and fucking turn her which is this is just gonna be a pain in the ass because oh then you gotta take and actually almost tear the tank apart doing that like you got to take them two little screws like i'm gonna have to take the coil off take the two little screws put it back turn her put her back in there all that fun shit but that is how i wick her and as you can see i took like six seven hits even hot hits and it's still flavor like i said sometimes depending on the flavor though it does mute it for some reason that is the only Bitch fit that a lot of people have is that the stubby mutes certain flavors. I have found the sweeter the flavor for the stubby tank, it tends not to mute it. Like this one is a vanilla uh, vanilla bean something. I can't even fucking remember. Um, strawberry banana villa, vanilla bean ice cream oatmeal cookie juice. And it's muting it to a point so if it's muting it too much take it up the watts in little increments not too high though and if you're still getting a dry hit thin your cotton out a little bit more than what I have on there and then lower your watts but you shouldn't have to like have the wattage way way up there for it to actually make the juice kind of flow uh, for the flavor, I did have to do it with a strawberry banana one that I had. I actually had to have my wattage pretty far up there for it to like really fire on that that juice, and then I got a lot of flavor. But you don't want to do that because then you have a chance of burning your coil and, and burning your cotton at that point. So thin your juice out. Like if it's still muting and it's still dry hitting, even doing that. 
take just even while it's wet and with a nice small pair of tweezers at that point and thin the cotton just a little bit more and take your scissors and snip a little bit like right off the top right in here at that point then and just a little bit on the sides because you can come right back in and if you want to and still kind of thin her out a little bit and pull some off if you want to uh, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal and as you can see since you put the top I put the top cap on it kind of flattens it out and pushes it um, right where it needs to be but that is how I actually that's how I, I uh, wick that, that that whole stubby setup. I, I tear it all apart, clean her all up, put her right back together like that. Usually not fucking up putting the airflow backwards though. That was my my bad. But as for everything else, it's put back on there perfectly, and I don't get no dry hits at all doing what I just did. So if you like. Tell your friends, like and subscribe. Mox Opal out.